seeing about four or five more of those. We could go home. All right. That would be a blessing. Turn in your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And uh, that, that was great. I love it. And I love hymns. I love my kids. I love hymns. I love them singing hymns. It was a blessing all the way around. All right. <clears> hmm. <throat> First Corinthians chapter number three. And I want to start reading this morning in verse nine. We'll read down about verse 15, I believe, is where we'll stop. First Corinthians chapter three, starting in verse number nine. Notice it says, For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he build there, buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, that's Jesus, by the way, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your love for us, for your mercy and grace extended to us through Jesus Christ on the cross and through his work done there and his shed blood from there. We ask for your blessing this morning. Pray that you'd meet with us in a very special, very real, very practical way. And then, Father, you would open our eyes, open our spiritual understandings this morning to the truths that are before us, that we might be encouraged, that we might be challenged and instructed, that we might be prepared more than anything for your uh, sending Jesus back for us. We ask for your help this morning. We thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat this morning. <clears throat> Now, the first thing that I want to talk about, the first thing that I want to mention, the first truth I want to reveal, which I hope you already knew this, but if you didn't, I want to make sure you do. <clears throat> this passage is not written specifically to unbelievers. It is written specifically to believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. This passage is not dealing with salvation, it's dealing with rewards in heaven because of how we conducted our lives, how we built our lives here on this earth as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we notice in verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. It's not talking about e eternal damnation in this passage, he's talking about uh, our judgment in heaven. And by the way, as Christians, we will have our lives judged. We will have to give an account of how we conducted our lives, how we built our lives in Christ. Uh, and yes, uh, we, we, we're not in, it's not in question whether we will get to go into heaven or not, uh, but uh, it is a question whether we will uh, hear well done, uh, whether we will be rewarded for what we've accomplished and done here on this earth, uh, or whether we will just, as they say, get in by the skin on our teeth. Say, so, did I have skin on my teeth? Oh, if you knew how thin it was. And some people are going to slide into heaven, I suspect, by the skin of their teeth, I wonder. Anyway, I want to first point out in this passage, uh, from verse 9 to 11, the founder and the foundation of all life. Not just your life or mine, but all life. Every life. And we notice in uh, verse 9 again, for we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. All right? 
it is God that brought us about. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, a wise master builder, laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. As saved people, we understand that we've entered into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ upon our uh, calling on Him for salvation, upon our faith that has been placed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and we have teamed up with Christ at that point to retrain, refocus, and rebuild our lives. Understand that before salvation, we were, we were broken in sin. We were, we were filthy in sin. We were destroyed and, and, and being walking toward utter destruction in our sin. And when we get saved, yes, we are declared righteous. Yes, we are placed uh, and, and adopted into the family of God. And I praise God for that truth. But there's still a lot of messed up things in our lives. There's still a lot of activity and areas of activity that need to be addressed uh, in our lives. But God desires to restore us to our pre-fallen state, pre-fallen condition, uh, th that of Adam and Eve in the garden before they chose uh, to eat the fruit which they were forbidden. But I want to point out that Jesus Christ as I mentioned earlier in our memory verse, is the founder, is the creator of every man's life. Notice verse 11 in our text. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the foundation of every life that is. And if we try to deny the foundation of life, we, in fact, destroy our own lives. You say, well, I don't know how we got here, but I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe there's a creation. I don't believe in the account of, of the Bible and creation. Not only does that prove you're a fool, it also proves that uh, you're, 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 you've destroyed yourself uh, without even realizing it. You called for your own destruction. Uh, he is the creator of all life. In John 1, 3 and 4, we, we quoted it earlier, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, he is the creator, and he is the foundation and founder of our lives. That is a truth that we must come to grips with and understand. Because if we don't, then we cannot build on that foundation, and what we do will not be built on the foundation and will not be built appropriately with the right considerations. For many years, I was in the construction and remodeling business. And almost every time I met with a potential customer to work on their pro project, they wanted to know, of course, what I was going to charge them, <laughs> but to know that I needed to know what they wanted and understand that it's all about what they wanted. All right, whether I was going to remodel a kitchen or a bathroom or build a barn or whatever we were going to build, what I needed to know was what does the owner thereof wish? Am I going to build it out of tin? Am I going to build it out of brick? Am I going to build it out of tile? Am I going to do uh, something else here? What, what exactly are you looking for and what exactly do you want? Listen, we are God's building, the Bible says. We, uh, He is our foundation. And ownership must be established at this point. We need to understand that he is the originator of every man's life. If we fail to acknowledge and identify that, everything thereafter will be a fail. Just like when I was working, in fact, sometimes for some of you all, I've did, done some projects. And understand that the, 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 the man 
paying the bill, the woman paying the bill, the person who's, uh, uh, who's the owner thereof gets the choices and everything. I did have a few occasions where they just, people said, just surprise me. Make this bathroom wow me when you're done. Well, they got wowed by the bathroom, and then they got wowed by the bill. They got two wows out of the deal. <laughs> hey, stuff's not cheap anymore. I don't do that anymore anyway, by the way, so don't, don't, don't come say, hey, preacher, will you do this for me? Because I'm, I'm done doing that, right? Uh, uh, so anyway, moving on. We need to acknowledge who the foundation and who the founder is so that we can understand who the owner is and who we're building for. Because there, is a lot, there are a lot of people today who make the mistake of thinking, this is my life. I get to do whatever I want. This is all about my enjoyment and my pleasure, and wouldn't God want me to be happy? Well, I'm not saying he wants you to be unhappy, but understand this. Your happiness is secondary to his happiness, and if he's not happy, buddy, there ain't nobody going to be happy. So we need to see that God has a plan for our life. And because he has a plan for our life, he has plans for the building of our life. Paul said, as he wrote here, that he and the other preachers were laborers together with God, building the readers' lives. That God had uh, incorporated them, had brought them in as master builders to work on these people's lives, to challenge them in the things of God, in the ways of God, and to do things according to the way God wanted them done. And he likened the readers' lives, our lives, as the buildings to be built in verse number 9. And indeed, we are in the process of being built for God. So there's an important matter I want to interject right here in this message. And that is this. If you have not placed your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone, let me be very clear with you. You can crawl in any body of water, any baptismal tank. You can have anything sprinkled on your head you wish. And it will not take away your sin. It will not prepare you for heaven. It will not be enough for, for you to claim and God to accept that, hey, this person is now a Christian. You can't add anything to what Jesus has done. There is no hocus pocus, no mystery, no magic, no anything I can do up here uh, that, that would cause you as my listeners this morning to be acceptable to God as far as salvation goes. There is only one foundation, and there is only one founder, and his name is Jesus Christ, and I can't add to that, and you can't add to that. All we can do is trust in that. And nothing we can do here, whether baptism or any other act or action, you can join this church, you can join this church every week if you want it, and I can rebaptize you every week, and you still can't, you won't get to heaven because of that. The only way you can go to heaven is by putting your faith and trust in Jesus and what he's done with his shed blood on that cross many years ago. And there's nothing more to it than that. So if you haven't done that, if you have not resolved that, if your sins are not under the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith in him alone, then everything else you do in your life, whether good or bad, whether right or wrong, whether it lines up with this book or not, everything else you have done in your life or will do in your life will not get you into heaven and will not get your reward. You will only hear, depart from me, I knew you not. I need to be clear with you. This message and this passage is dealing with believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. People who've placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior, not trusting in themselves or any works that they could do or would do or even should do, but only in what He's done. 
and called on him as a savior, repenting of my sin and turning to him for salvation, calling on him as a drowning man with he as my only hope. That's the way of salvation. Nothing else will help you with that. But from that point on in our lives, we are now building, rebuilding, and retraining ourselves to live for God in a way that would please God. And from that point in our lives, we see that we can either be rewarded or just get into heaven by the skin of our teeth. And I submit that there's a lot of folks who will have nothing for eternity to show of their salvation except their own soul. They did nothing. They accomplished nothing. They rebuilt nothing. They, they, it, it, it's empty. Their account in heaven is empty because they did not rebuild. They did not uh, retrain. They did not do anything beyond salvation uh, to, to uh, show in their faith in Christ after that. And that will be sad. We'll deal with that more at the end, though. So I want to talk about the building blocks of life. First, the founder and foundation of our, our life is, is Jesus Christ. You are here because of Jesus Christ. You are alive because of Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, it is only because of Jesus Christ. But after that, after we are saved by Christ and by faith in Christ, then we have some building to do. Then we have some remodeling to do. Then we have some uh, repairs to make in our lives. You know, just because you're saved doesn't mean God is entirely happy with how you are. Maybe your experience is like mine. If you're saved, you got saved, and, and, and God did some great changes and made some miraculous things happen in your life, for which I am thankful. But even years down the road from that event, you're still looking at your life going, God, why am I still so stinking sinful? Why am I not more like Jesus Christ than I am right now? How are we building on the foundation of Jesus Christ and his salvation? What are we building on as we begin our eternal life with Christ? And by the way, your eternal life begins the moment you accept him as your Savior. We often think of eternal life as what's going to happen in the future, but it began when I accepted him as my Savior. I haven't realized... I can't visualize, I can't even comprehend all that that means. But I want to begin preparing for it right now. You know, I mentioned being a, a builder, a remodeler, construction type guy. Years ago, after we got the church established and was here for a time, um, my Uncle Lawrence said, Jim, when are, when are we going to build you a house? I was renting up to that point, old farmhouses. I won't go into that. I'll spare you. But I was renting old farmhouses. And one day, uh, it was pushing into wintertime. It was in the fall of the year. And, and he said, Jim, when are we going to start building you a house? He didn't have another job for us, by the way. <laughs> so I said, what do you think tomorrow? Uh, or maybe he said, what, what about tomorrow? I said, uh, I don't have any plans. I, I, I don't have any money. I, I don't have anything. He goes, well, your dad said you could have part of the farm to build on. Let's just do it. And I went back to my wife, and I said, Uncle Lawrence wants to start building our house tomorrow. <laughs> we don't have plans. You're right. He said, we have until tomorrow morning at 7 to get them together. So we sat down and we began drawing and figuring and thinking. One of my thinkings was this. I'm not old, but I sure hope to get there one day. 
So I want to make sure my house is kind of planned out with that in mind. Because a lot of times I was remodeling houses and trying to make houses that weren't old person friendly, old person friendly. And I thought, now would be a good time to do that. So all my house is on one level. It's all flat, wheelchair accessible in every room. Right? <clears throat> I'm ready. Only thing I lack is all the grab bars. And I thought that would be tacky for a young family to have grab bars everywhere. So I didn't install those. But I have them, and they're ready. <clears throat> so anyway, where was he going? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so they showed up the next morning at 7 and began moving dirt and getting ready to build a house. And we worked feverishly on getting the plans together. So, uh, but my, my, my thought there is this. I had to think about who the house was for what the needs of the house were. By the way, we only had six kids at the time. We had 12 by the time we're, you know, just a few years ago. So we only built the house for thinking eight, maybe. Well, nonetheless, y'all understand that thought, right? <clears throat> but you build a house for who's going to inhabit it. And so the thought processes were... Let's make this inhabitable for when we get old, right? Um, so that's what our goal was there. And from there, we began choosing different things, door sizes and uh, room sizes and ex accessibility things, right? And so all of that went into thinking about how we're going to build and in which way we're going to build. One of the thought processes was, well, we, we have a few tornadoes in the area occasionally. So we skinned our whole house in plywood. And then we skinned on top of that with metal. And then we weren't even finished building. It was only a year into this. We were still working on it. And when a tornado passed through our neighborhood, went right over our house and destroyed the next house and my house stood I was able to by myself repair any damages that had incurred but the point was we were thinking about how we're going to do this and what building blocks and how we're going to put it together my question to you this morning is we're talking about building our lives in Christ what are you building with how are you building your life in Christ because one of these days, whether you realize it or not, we're not thinking about getting old, but we will. But one of these days, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for what we did and how we did it and with what we did it. And that's the, the subject matter of this passage. Again, if you're not saved, if you're not in Christ, none of this is going to matter. You must be saved for this to matter. The most moral, the most upright, the most godly, righteous person that exists on the planet Earth will end up in hell if they don't have their foundation right. And so you must have that right. But following that, how are we building in Christ? I want you to notice with me verse 12 of our passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, Now if any man build upon this foundation, speaking of God, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. You know, there's a lot of things that goes into a house. Uh, some of them are wood, hay, stubble type things, right? A bucket of drywall joint compound, you're mudding the, you know, that that's cheap and you know, there's not much to it and, and all of that. The drywall, the wood sticks, all of that. You've got some of all of that in any building process. But you don't want to build it all out of that. Or it won't hold up to a tornado. It won't stand up to a fire. So, what are we building with? And the question becomes, is your life built with approved materials? And I'm talking about God 
approved materials, not you approved materials. Because I can tell you right now, at least in, in, can I say, our neck of the woods, in the United States of America, the number one thing we think about is comfort. Comfort. I want to be comfortable. I want to have heat. I want to have air conditioning. I want to have, you know, comfortable chairs. I want a comfortable uh, bed. I want a comfortable this. I want a comfortable that. We've become a throwaway society, right? It's about convenience. We want to take our little bowl of soup and pop it in the microwave and hit a button and have it, have it zap it and then take it out and eat it two minutes later, right? We want to be able to walk into the kitchen, flip a knob, stick a turkey in the oven and, and ha have it cooked and take it out. And, you know, if, if the ice maker don't work, throw the refrigerator away and get me another one because I want to I walk up and push the button and have ice in my cup, move it over a little bit, get some water in my cup and go on down the road. Right? I see y'all nodding. You know what I'm talking about. And now we, we're such a people of convenience, we want to be able to log in from our phone at home at, our phone at the store, look in our refrigerator at home and see how much milk's in there, do I need eggs, what have you. I'm just saying a lot of times, and yes, that, those options are available, we want to be able to check on our phone and change the temperature, lay down to go to bed at night and say, oh, I forgot the kitchen lights are on and push a button on our phone, have the kitchen lights go off. I mean, we got all kinds of gadgets, but they're all for our comfort. What happens when the power goes out? None of that junk works. You can't cook your turkey because you don't know how to cook on a fire. Some of you are saying, I do. I praise God for you. That's good. That's wise. Right? I'm just saying this, what are we building with? And are they approved materials? And are they going to stand the test of time? Are you building your life with the building blocks that will stand the test of time and withstand the heat of judgment? That's what it's talking about. I think about in my mind, in Matthew chapter 19, I've mentioned this situation a number of times, and yes, uh, the man in this passage was a lost man, but he came saying to Jesus, tell me the way of salvation. Jesus listed the commandments. He says, oh, I've done those. He said, then I'll tell you what, go sell everything you've got. Give it to the poor, come follow me. And it tells us the man went away sad that day because he had much. So let me, let me help you connect that story to this situation. That man had spent his whole life getting building blocks, getting stuff in his life that he thought was good, doing just enough to get to heaven and came to Jesus to justify himself before Jesus. And Jesus said this, all the rest of that junk you've got, it's no good, it's of no value, give it away to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Let's do something that'll really build your life. And he goes, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Oh, I want to go to heaven, but I, I, I'm not willing to do that. Can I suggest those of us that are saved, we, we're looking forward to going to heaven, but are we willing to do what we need to do to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. To be rewarded, or just we just trying to slide by by the skin of our teeth. You know, I'm not a I'm not a big sports fan. In fact, I'm probably the least of all sports fans. But I know a little bit, and I, I remember in baseball. You hit the ball, and it goes out, right? And they're trying to catch it. They get a hold of it, and they're trying to get you out, so they're throwing the ball back in there. And every once in a while, you have to slide in the base, hopefully touching the base with your toe on your... And, and they try to get you out with the ball, right? You got that picture in your mind? 
And sometimes it's so close to whether you're out or safe, they have to do an instant replay. And they go back and huddle around a video uh, screen, and they're looking, and they're studying, and then they may come out with a judgment and say, he's safe, or he's out. Ah! And the other side goes crazy with it, right? I don't think we should get to heaven the same way. I don't think we should try to have to. I think we ought to try to hit it out of the park. Right? Some of us are dancing around the bases like we hit it out of the park, and they're going to tag us out for sure. You think you're on your way to heaven, but he's going to say, I never knew you. That's scary, by the way. Go back and listen to that message. Listen, this man went away sad. He thought he was sad. He thought he had everything in order. Jesus said, all that you've got is junk, and it will do you no good. Now listen, some of us are saved, but all we got is junk that's not going to do us any good. The building blocks that we're building with are not God approved. Is your life being built with God's priorities in mind? I've already talked about my wife and I when we designed our home. We, we, we've got my office and our bedroom on one side of the house. You know what we got in between them two rooms? The master bathroom. Right? And it's wheelchair accessible. I can be sitting at my desk. I could be wheeled out, wheel right into the restroom, get my shower, get my whatever I got to do, and move along. We were thinking about it ahead about who's living in here people that are getting old right but this house that we're building this building that we're building is god's building owned by god building being built for god and we should have our god's priorities in mind as we're doing the building but are we What are God's priorities for your life? What is God's will for your life? Say, preacher, I'm not really sure. We ought to get it figured out before we get too far down the road. What does God want for you, from you? What does God want you to do for him? Wouldn't it be a shame if we got to heaven thinking we, we were doing what God wanted us to do or thinking maybe that it didn't even matter what we did? And him saying, well, Here's what I wanted you to accomplish. Here's what I was hoping that you was going to make a part of your life when, you, when I saved you. So everything that you did, whoosh. You know what the sound is? The sound of the toilet flushing. I don't know that there's toilets in heaven. I, I, I'm still undecided about that. But the point is, I'm wondering how many of us are actually going about our life and it isn't, it's not going to amount to anything that matters for eternity, right? So let's talk about the third thought that I want to share with you in this, in this area, in this topic, and that's the building inspector and the building inspection. In 1 Corinthians 13, or 3, 13 to 15, I want you to notice that it says, every man's work. Who's every man's work? Who, who's it talking about? Say me. It's talking about me. Every man's work. You're not excluded from that shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Wowzers. Or yikes. Let me tell you that there is a time of inspection that is coming. 
Inspection day is coming. And no one will escape from that inspection. Right? Those of you that were in the military, by the way, happy Veterans Day. Not the major part of what's going on here today. That was yesterday, but happy Veterans Day. Thank you all for your service. Thank you all for that, and and, and you're welcome. Having been in the military, one of the first things that we did after they issued us all our clothing was we learned how to fold it and put it away properly. The socks went in this drawer, and they better be folded such and such a way, matched, all that. Then the drawers, skivvies, and all the other garments had their exact way that they, we were shown how to fold them. You had to learn how to make your bed, and it had better be the way it was showed to you, because if they came in to do your inspection, and it wasn't the way they taught you to do it, everything was later found on the floor or out the window in the grass. No, I'm not exaggerating. Every garment, every article... Every thread of of bedding was, do it again, I'll be back. Sir, yes, sir. Now I've got some of you thinking. But I'm just saying no one is, uh, where's where's such and such? Well, he, he went out for the day, sir, he'll be back later. You're still getting inspected. Then you're going to have to answer for why you weren't there. But I want you to notice verse 13 says that every man's work shall be made manifest. The definition of of, of uh, manifest is clearly visible to the eye. It will be clearly visible to the eye what you did and how you did it and whether it was right or not. Uh, Another definition of, of manifest is obvious to the understanding. You won't have to wonder, did I fold those correctly? Did I make my bed right? No, it's obvious to the eye. It is obvious to the understanding that you did not. I want you to notice from this passage that nothing, not a thing, shall be hid. It says, for the day shall declare it. The day shall declare it. There is nothing that's going to escape. Every aspect of your life will be revealed on that day. Everything you did to add to, to build upon, to work for, uh, preparing this building for God will be made manifest on that day. And everything... Everything shall be tested by fire. It shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. For just a moment, let me share with you that the codes of this inspection building houses here in Perryville, I had some code inspections. Had to make sure you did everything by the building code. And then there was an uh, electric code. And then there was a plumbing code. And there was just all sorts of codes that went along with everything that needed to be done to make sure that it was right. Well, God has a code. And his codes are impartial. I want you to notice what he reveals to us here. The tests that God will use on us and on our lives are impartial. In other words, it's not going to be, well, I really like Jim, so I'm going to let him slide on this or that. Some of the building codes, by the way, in Perryville are partial. Meaning that if you had a good relationship with the building inspector, you were let slide a little bit. Just one for instance. 
I had an electrical inspection one time, and the building inspector came into the building, and I was kind of nervous. You know, I don't know how this is going to go. And where's the service panel? So well, follow me, and I'll take you down and show you the service panel. Good. That's it? Well, you're the electrician. You're the one supposed to know how to do this. I'm just the inspector. And off they went. Whew, good thing I had a clue how, what I was doing. By the way, for the record, I don't, that person's no longer here. So you, I don't know who the inspector is now, but I wonder if they're certified in what the code of electronics is. But nonetheless, the point is this. God has a very simple test. Fire. And it, by the way, you ever think, fire is impartial. It doesn't care who you are, what you are. It's hot. It will, it, it, it doesn't, it's not impartial. It won't treat one thing. Well, this is a little flammable, so I'm not going to be quite so hot for this one. No, no, no. You pass through the fire, and if you're flammable, poof, you're gone. Right? The fire is the same no matter who passes through it or what passes through it. It's both hot and consuming. When God takes your life and passes it through the fire... It's going to be an impartial test, but the question is, how will your life hold up? How will my life hold up? And by the way, according to the text, the results of this inspection, this isn't a do-over inspection. This isn't like the in military inspection of my, uh, of my bed or, or my clothing uh, in, my, you know, in my place that I had it, my locker. They'd throw it out on the floor or out in the lawn and say, fetch it and do it right this time. I'll be back. This is an eternal inspection. This isn't like a house inspection where they come, that's wrong, that's wrong, that, fix it and let us know we'll come back and re-inspect. No, this is a, a done deal once and for all inspection. Okay, That's why, by the way, the Bible says examine yourselves. Examine yourselves, whether they be, you be in the faith. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, we often quote verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering us, not willing that any should perish. But verses 10 and 11 say this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Then verse 11 says this, Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now I want you to think about that word dissolved for a minute. We often think about dissolved like in water, right? Something got this, you dissolved the, the, the sugar or you dissolved the salt or you dissolved something in water, the tablet. He's talking about the fire. Everything shall melt with fervent heat. And understand this. He's talking about everything that's on this world and of this world. You might have the nicest house on the planet. It'll be dissolved. You might have the nicest car. Maybe it's an old classic or maybe it's a brand new electric something or other. It's going to be dissolved in the heat. What have you built your life out of? It's got to go through the heat. And it's impartial. And it's eternal. And what I see in verse 14 is that that some people having their life pass through the fire will be rewarded. I want that to be me. 
I'm sure you want that to be you. It says, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Notice that it has to be built thereupon. Where's thereupon? It's on Jesus Christ. Again, outside of Christ, none of this matters. But in Christ, it all matters for eternity. And the second thing that I see here in this passage is that some will be left empty-handed. Verse 15 says, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Some of us, after inspection, will have absolutely nothing to show for our lives in eternity but our own soul. We will have no rewards, nothing, nothing of eternal value except our own soul. I want you to think back for a moment to that young man that came to Jesus and said, I've, I've obeyed the, the commandments, or at least the ones that were listed. And Jesus said, go sell everything you have. And he went away sad because he had great possessions. Everything that he kept, he lost. And was left with nothing. Not even eternal life, which is what he came asking for. But again, this passage isn't talking about our eternal life. It's talking about what we build on after our salvation. But some of us will be stripped of everything we had because it'll all be burned up. It'll all be melted in fervent heat. I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, and I'm going to conclude the message in Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus is delivering a message to the churches. He praises some. He warns most. And in chapter 3, starting in verse 14, he begins talking to the church of Laodicea. Chapter 3, verse 14. And under the church of the Laodiceans write... These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. He says in verse 15, I know thy works. By the way, he knows all of our works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, I would that thou wert cold or hot. Remember, we are building for him. This isn't about me. You like hot food? Season it to your taste. If you're making something for me, please don't make it that hot. I don't mind heat. I just don't want it so hot i got to blow my nose between every bite. If my eyes are running because of what I put in my mouth, I'm not putting any more in there. Just saying. But notice as we go on. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold nor hot. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest. He's, they, they didn't present to him what he wanted. Just like many others haven't presented to God what he wanted. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and naked and blind, he said in verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, which, uh, that thou mayest be clothed, that thou, uh, that thou and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. He says in verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You know, God gives us his word so that we can know what he wants. I note that he wants us to have our nakedness covered. The people of our day could sure learn a lesson from there. 
He says, I want you to buy gold of me that's already been tried in the fire and it will pass the test. He says, if you look at your life and if I'm, I love you and I'm rebuking you, you ought to repent and get it right while you have opportunity. In verse 20, he continues, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him, will sup with him and he with me. We'll have a relationship. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Written for our benefit, written for our learning, and written for our preparation. This life is not about you. It's about Him. It's about what He did for you, has done, is doing, and will do for you. You're not building this life for your enjoyment, for your entertainment, for your value. In the end, He will inspect it. He will try your life with a fire. And things of no value or no eternal value anyway will be dissolved and burned up and gone. And you may be left there with nothing for the rest of eternity to show for your life. What a shame that would be. Well, I get to go to heaven. Praise God. But God's told us in his book so we could be prepared and have more than that for eternity. God wants us to have more than that for eternity. <clears throat> but the question is, what are you doing with your life? How are you building your life? And what things in your life have eternal value and what do not? Let's stand together. What things in your life have eternal value? They add to you spiritually. They add to others around you spiritually. They are a help. They are a blessing. They are assisting you or others to be close to your Creator and the foundation of your life that is Jesus Christ. It's a good time to evaluate. I remember in the military, they would occasionally say there will be an inspection at such and such a time on such and such a date. It wasn't often, but they did occasionally. And, and even when they didn't, and the sergeant walked into the room and called you to attention and announced that they were going to inspect, your mind was going through, did I put everything away right? Did I fold everything right? Did I make my bed correctly? Did I do this? Did I do that? What? And you had to stand there in perfect silence, staring off across the room while they went through all of your stuff, just hoping that you would hear, good job, or whatever they might say that was positive. Or maybe nothing, and they moved the next guy or gal over, having found to throw on your head or out into the middle of the floor, or worse, drop! You know, one of these days we're going to stand before God, probably more likely fall on our faces before Him. But boy, I want to hear well done, a good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear anything else. Father, I want to thank You for the love, the mercy, and the grace that You've displayed and demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ, our foundation and our founder, our creator and our savior. 
And Father, from the day that we accepted him as our Savior and called on him for salvation, realizing our need and our lostness, repenting of our sin and sinfulness, placed our faith and trust in him, we have been building and working to build our lives for your glory and honor. Father, I pray that we would do an examination this morning, do a quick assessment this morning of what we've accomplished thus far and whether it meets your approval and, and, and whether uh, our, the, the building blocks and the materials and what we've done is up to your code and will pass your test. Father, we ask for your blessing. Father, there may be somebody here this morning that's never trusted in Jesus as their Savior. They've, they've still got doubts. They're still uncertain as to whether they will even be at that particular judgment. They may be expelled before that. Father, I pray that you'd help them to realize their need and to respond even this morning to receive the gift of eternal life from your Son, the Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation that we can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for your blessing and ask for your help this morning as we consider and as we assess before day of inspection arrives. In Jesus' name, amen.